So as I mentioned in a um, <clears throat> previous video, I have, my, my husband and I, we have been trying to get pregnant with our second child since January. And at the end of maybe like mid-July, I found out I was pregnant. Um, didn't really believe it. I took like 10 pregnancy tests in the first day. They were very, very faint, but they were there. I was very excited. I told everybody right away. <laughs> Um, and all was going well, you know, um, I, I had no reason to think anything would be wrong. And as many of you know, anybody that's been pregnant, you usually don't see your doctor until maybe eight or nine weeks, maybe a little bit earlier if you have anything come up. So, you know, it's just continuing to be pregnant. I've uh, getting the sore breasts, feeling more tired. Oh, I'm so excited. I, you know, I know many women spend years trying to get pregnant. Um, so it could have taken a lot longer. Um, but seven months, just especially during COVID, I just am so grateful that finally I had something positive that happened. Um, and we started thinking of names and getting excited about doing the blood tests where we could find out the gender and our little boy Hudson was so excited and then on our wedding anniversary I wiped and saw a little bit of blood it wasn't a lot it was just a little bit of spotting but I wasn't having cramping or anything like that so I made me nervous, but I didn't think much of it. Over the next couple days, I continued to spot a little bit, but again, nothing heavy, no cramping. It mainly looked like old blood. And of course, I was obsessively <laughs> looking on the internet. And, you know, it's common. A lot of women have some spotting, even some bleeding in the beginning of a healthy pregnancy. Uh, so we went on a trip couple days after that and I went to the bathroom one night and there was heavier spotting and something told me to go to the emergency room and so I went and the ultrasound tech was gone so all they could do is you know give me a blood test and the doctor checked my cervix and it was a little bit soft, a little bit open, which wasn't good, but not a definite sign that I had miscarried or was miscarrying. So I had to go back the next day and <clears throat> I had a 30 minute ultrasound. The ultrasound tech wouldn't tell me anything. So I went back to my room that I was very comfortable in by this point. And spent a lot of time in that <laughs> emergency room. Um, and the doctor came and said, well, you know, we're seeing everything that we would expect to see for somebody who's, you know, maybe like six weeks along, you know, so we wouldn't really see a heartbeat yet, um, but it looks good and we don't think you've miscarried, but what we're gonna do is take your HCG level again and see if it's increasing. So I'm like, okay, so the next day I went back for a blood test. That night, after obsessively calling my doctor, I found out that it had doubled. Like, yay! I was still pregnant. I was so excited. I was so relieved. I feel like I had dodged a horrible tragedy. So when we got back into town, I went and saw my doctor about a week later. And at this point, no matter what, even if we'd gotten the dating a little bit wrong, I was like definitely seven weeks, probably more. And while there's sometimes not a heartbeat, then there should be. And so I had two ultrasounds that day. And they showed the gestational sac and the yolk sac. They couldn't see the fetus. And they couldn't see the, the heartbeat, but my doctor said, you know, sometimes this happens, you might just not be far enough along, so we're going to do another ultrasound in 11 days. 
And at this point, I didn't have a good feeling. I let myself start to grieve, but I still had hope. I still hoped that maybe I just wasn't as far along as we thought and the next ultrasound will be better. And so, yeah, finally, 11 days later, it's the longest 11 days of my life. I went back to the hospital and it looked exactly the same as the, the other ultrasound. There was no heartbeat. And it was, felt pretty effed up because my body had not gotten the signal that I was no longer pregnant. It's, I was getting more nauseous and more tired and I, I even had some colostrum come out of my boobs. <laughs> and so I, um, so it was fetal demise. Um, So my doctor told me, you know, I could just wait and see if my body released everything on its own. And it, so I waited a week and it just really uh, was awful. Just feeling like I felt pregnant, but also having this feeling like you know, this isn't probably like scientifically correct feeling, just like everything in my uterus was dead. So my doctor <clears throat> prescribed uh, misoprostol. It's also called Cytotec. It's um, a medicine that is used for a few things. Sometimes some people call it the abortion pill. It's used sometimes to stimulate an abortion. They also use it during childbirth to stimulate contractions. So I took it. A couple hours later, I started to have some mild cramps. And then the cramping got so horrible, it felt exactly like childbirth. I had unmedicated childbirth, and this was these contractions were just as strong and just as painful. But during childbirth, you know that there's gonna be a baby at the end. And with this, you know that you're just gonna pass all of the potential of a baby. So that after about three or four hours of extreme pain, I thought I'd have some warning when the blood would come, but my pants were just soaked in blood and, and it all came out, the little yolk sac and the potential. But my body had finally cleared it, so I felt like I could start healing. They gave me so much empathy for all of the women that have lost pregnancy. I had no idea how hard it was, how painful it is, just physically. Definitely, I had no idea how painful it was physically, but emotionally, God. It just like destroyed me. And I felt let down by my body, and I know all of the, like I know logically, like a lot of times a miscarriage happens because of chromosomal, chromosomal abnormalities, and there's a reason, but it doesn't make it any less painful. God, it just taken so long to get pregnant, and so now 
I'm waiting. I'm still bleeding right now today. About five days later, I'm cramping, but not as bad. And waiting for my period to start so I can try again. Um, I'm pretty open, maybe sometimes too much, and so I, you know, I told told people what we were going through, and almost every woman I talked to had also had a miscarriage or the same kind of circumstance where there was no heartbeat and they had to take medication or have to get a DNC to remove everything and um, God it's just shocking how common it is but the but but the fact that it's common doesn't make it any less painful just I mean it makes no difference but but it made me feel less alone because when it first happened, I felt like, even though I knew this wasn't true, I felt like I'm the only person I know who's going through this pain right now. And at the time, I knew a lot of people who were pregnant with healthy pregnancies, and I felt really jealous. I'm not proud to say that, but I was really jealous, and I felt like I'm cursed, I'm the unlucky one, and having all of these women be open with me and shared their experiences helped me in at least the first phase of my healing and made me feel like I wasn't broken and like there was still hope almost all of these women went on to have a healthy pregnancy pretty soon after the miscarriage and so that gave me hope and and it made me feel like there were so many people out there that really understood what I was feeling. And they were so lovely. And I'm so grateful to all of those women and all of the women that are willing to share about it. And I also understand the women that don't want to share about it. It's so painful. And, and so however, a woman chooses to deal with the miscarriage is, is exactly what she needs to do. But if, if you feel like I did and you feel alone and mad at your body and like there's no hope and like you're destined for many miscarriages, I encourage you to reach out to other women that know what you're going through. I've never felt so grateful for that kind of sisterhood before. And I know it's dark and sad kind of sisterhood, but also very nurturing. So that's where we are. And that my next video like this is a pregnancy announcement. Maybe it won't be, but I'm going to try to get back to that place of hope. And if you're somebody that has experienced pregnancy loss or, oh God, or infant loss, I can't even imagine that. They're early life um sending you so much love god it's the fucking worst it's the worst but we have each other and we will heal Wow, this is a long video. <laughs> um, if you have any questions about my experience, I'm very willing to talk about it. 
Um, if you want to share about your own experience in the comments below, please do. Or you can also email me if you want to have a more private discussion. Sending you lots of love.